Equip for Learning is something that uh, was, I think, the brainchild of Dale, I want to say. Uh, Dale really encouraged me and encouraged the Generation Next group to think about uh, what's, what's a benchmark? What's, what's something that we can really dig into and, and identify to monitor? And I hadn't been thinking about this because I just prefer to see the continuous scale and distributions and variation. Uh, but we needed a, a marker. At what point can we say that youth are equipped for learning? So we dug into the data, we dug into the response patterns and did some technical stuff with the data through a measurement model. And we identified the point on each one of these measures where, where youth are saying, yeah, this is more like me than not. So it's, it's not a really high bar for commitment to learning. It's a, I am committed to learning more so than I'm not committed to learning. But it's a consistent sense that, yeah, this is more like me than not. And it's more like me across all of the items that make up commitment to learning. And just to give you a sense, there are lots of items on the survey that provide information about commitment to learning. Go to school prepared, uh, do your homework. Uh, being a student is an important role right now for me. All of these things about ways that I am committed to my learning because it's an important part of who I am right now. And I see it as being an important function for my future. Uh, so we were able to identify uh, this point on, a, on Equip for Learning. Uh, but before we get to um, this idea of Equip for Learning, I want to dig a little bit more into uh, some differences among ethnic groups and racial groups. Because this is how we define and talk about the achievement gap. Uh, and and I'm, my group is also helping me rethink the way we think about achievement gap. So I'm going to present uh, something a little bit later. But for right now, I want to dig into these scales again, talk about some disparities in these measures, and then come back to this idea of equipped for learning. Because we're going to look at disparities for equipped for learning, and they're a little bit different uh, than the disparities in some of these other measures. So here's a picture of commitment to learning. You can see the ethnic and racial communities on the left. The zero mark uh, indicates the relative location of, of, student, of white students. And these numbers on the bottom are essentially the number of standard deviations difference. And we usually think about these as 0.2 is a small difference. That's 0.2 of a standard deviation. Whereas something like 1.0, a full standard deviation difference, is really big. That's the kind of uh, disparity that we see in academic achievement, usually standard deviations of 1.0 or larger. But here in commitment to learning, we see the American Indian uh, negative disparity from white students, but we, we see a very positive uh, difference for Asian students, Somali students, and Hmong students who have very positive commitment to learning relative to white students. Whereas uh, uh, black students, and you can see the little dot here for, for white students, which is why I'm saying right around here is the, oh, it doesn't show my little marker. Uh, right around zero is where, where white students are. Uh, and, and you notice that black students are right there on the zero. So in terms of commitment to learning, there is really no difference between students from black communities or white communities. Uh, where we see the differences are a little bit with Latino students, a little larger for multiple race students, and, and it's much bigger for American Indian students. So I'm going to show you some of these pictures a little bit. Oh, unfortunately, this one didn't show all the... So the, the slides have resized uh, in the transition from my computer. Um, but here we can see again that uh, the Somali students tend to be a little more positive in terms of positive identity where most of the other ethnic groups are just slightly on the negative side. Notice it's all around 0.2, which is quite frankly small, a very small disparity. Here's social competence, all about 0.2, except for again the American Indian students, but quite small in terms of differences. Here's empowerment, being supported, and teacher school support all, again, about 0.2 or smaller. So the differences among ethnic groups are really not that significant. We don't see disparities in social and emotional skills, supports, uh, as we do in achievement. 
Uh, and here's mental distress. Just as a picture of one challenge, one challenge that youth face. Not quite, uh, a, a little bit more on the 0.2 side, but still relatively small. Let me compare this, for example. Here's a commitment to learning. The gold bar is reading, the maroon bar is math, the blue bar is commitment to learning. The profile that we see for these four groups are very different for academic achievement than for commitment to learning. They are not aligned. Black students really have no difference in commitment to learning from white students, but they are almost a full standard deviation below in reading and math achievement in eighth grade. Here is positive identity. There is no difference between our black youth and white youth in eighth grade on positive identity. And again, black students have a full standard deviation lower reading and math achievement. Even among American Indian students who have a, a big academic disparity, the disparity that, that we see in their positive identity doesn't even compare it's about a third of that compared relative to white students. <clears throat> to be equipped means that on average, students recognize characteristics associated with the developmental skills as being very much or extremely like them. They agree or strongly agree with values, behaviors, and characteristics defining each skill. And, and these students engage in relevant skill-based behaviors most or all of the time. <clears throat> Here's the proportion equipped for learning with respect to commitment to learning. From grade five to 11, it's between 60 and 80%. Between 60 to 80% of our students are equipped for learning as, as we go from grade five to 11. Equipped for learning with social competence, it's lower. It tends to be between, especially in the 11th grade, between 40 and 60% now are equipped for learning with respect to social competence. This is an area where students are asking for support, where we could actually develop supports. Here's the proportion that are equipped for learning with respect to positive identity. And again, we see the, the really unique trajectory of Somali students in the top there, where Somali students report the highest level of positive identity across all grades. But we also see the decline from grade five to eight in positive identity. There are unending questions in all of these data. And I'll just show you a couple of examples of things we've looked at uh, to try to understand it. <clears throat> and to try to understand it in other contexts, what do these data say about other things that students report and experience? So what do we know about equipped for learning and school grades? Well, we have three skill areas. Commitment to learning, positive identity, and social competence. If students are not equipped in any of these three skill areas, that is, there's a zero number of skills equipped, they tend to report lower grades than students who are equipped in all three areas. In fact, it's a full grade point lower for all grades except grade five, notice that grade five in, in the zero column, grade five is that blue line on the top. They report slightly higher grades, but for grades eight, nine, and 11, students who are not e equipped on any of the three skills on average report about a 2.5, and students who are equipped in all three areas are reporting nearly a 3.5, a full grade point higher if you're equipped for learning on these three skill areas. What about after school participation? If we look at grade 11, this, this might be the challenging grade, right, to get the juniors involved in after school activities. Those that are not equipped on any of the three skills participate in after school activities about 60%. And those that are equipped on all three areas they report over 80% participation in after-school activities. 